artist and an illustrator and I find all my inspiration in animals and nature. So today we're going to be painting in watercolours a picture of a parakeet, a ring-necked parakeet. It's going to take approximately one hour. I found a lovely picture of a ring-necked parakeet on the internet to work from today, um, but you can look outside your window if you have birds in your garden, or find a nice picture in a book to work from, or you can instead draw from a lovely colourful flower that you might have in your house. Before I paint anything, I always take a really good long hard look at what it is that I'm painting in order to pick out the right colour palette for my, for my picture. So I select all the paints that I'm going to need and I place them in little blobs in my uh, mixing palette and make sure I have um, all the colours I need to get started. It's really important that you have um, one of these uh, white, clear uh, mixing palettes. Um, it's important that it's white so you get to see um, actually how your paint's going to apply to the paper. I always keep a little square of watercolour paper uh, just to test my paints on. And a little squadge of tissue. Uh, it's really helpful to just to dry off any excess water and um, yeah, dab away any paint that you don't need on your paper. So now for your brushes. I often have a variety of different uh, size brushes on hand because um, sometimes you'll need something much bigger to um, apply paint to a large surface area but then it's always good to have a really small brush as well so you can get all of those lovely little details. It's important to use actual watercolour paper for your paintings. If you use anything less, uh, your paper often goes a bit crinkly, but this is really absorbent and it's textured so it will gather all of the paint and keep it in the right place. So I think we're probably ready to start painting now. So I'm going to start just sketching out the bird very, very lightly. And I don't want to do too many pencil marks because when you paint over your pencil marks in watercolour you can't rub them out um, so it's best to just be really delicate with them and just put a few marks in the areas where you need to know so just the edges of the shoulders maybe where the tips of the wings are maybe where the branches where the bird's sitting and then yeah, just the end of the tail feathers there and then I'm going to take my thinnest brush and make it a little bit wet and then just make up the first green so for that I'm using a bit of the yellow and a bit of this green and what I want to do is make a really really pale version of the green so I'm just going to use this green to outline my painting. So I'm going to need a little bit more white in there I think. So I'm going to start just by outlining the bird very faintly with my watercolour. Okay so you can see here that I've just done very lightly just the outline of the, uh, the green of the parrot there and those are the guidelines that are going to help me know where to put the rest of the watercolour. So now I'm just going to outline the beak and they've got a lovely bright sort of pinky red beak so I'm going to make up a nice pinky red. When you mix the colours always test make sure they're the right colour before you put them on your painting. Again just going to mark out where that beak is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bigger brush and I'm going to mix up um, a different green and I'm going to start to fill in some of the areas where the feathers are the brightest on the bird and just add a lot of water to make sure it all looks like a nice even gradient. Make sure you leave areas of white as well um, where the highlights or the light shining on the bird. How I've loosely started mapping out the watercolours there in the different areas with lots of water to make sure they blend smoothly. I'm going to start to add a bit of yellow now into that green just to mix it up a little bit because the, the bird has yellow feathers almost peeking out in between the green. And you can use your water to mix the yellow and green together. If you just apply water, it'll mix together on the paper. What I'm going to do is use the tiny brush um, with a little bit of pure black because this little bird has a, a really black eye. I'm just going to map out where that eye is. 
So I always do um, a cross check and I make sure, is the eye lined up to the beak? Where is it in relation to the rest of the features of the head? Um, just cross check your proportions before you put the eye in. So around the eye, the parakeet has a, a red ring. If you don't want your colours to run in different areas, it's a good idea to have a drier brush than you usually use. So I often take all the water off my brush before doing really delicate, uh, intricate areas. Okay, now we're going to work more into the beak because it's a lot more vivid than I've got here. So mix up a nice vivid red. And if you want the colours to be more vivid, uh, you can use a slightly less water. Can you see there? I've left a little highlight at the top of the beak, just where the light's hitting it. So I can see my little bird actually has uh, a little bit of blue and a little bit of pink in the, uh, in the area around its neck. So I'm going to add that in now. And we just want to blend it with the colours that are already on the paper. So you can do that using just plain water. Can you see that where I've added the blue there? Yeah. Now we're going to need some definition to where the wings are. So I'm going to take a slightly darker green and my bigger brush and I'm going to just paint in the same direction as the wing feathers are going and pick out some of the darker areas in the breast feathers of the bird. Can you see now there's just a little bit more definition in the feathers. Now I'm going back to the thin brush, we're going to paint the parakeet's feet in. So for that I'm going to need a little of the light brown and we're just going to, like we did before, just lightly sketch where the feet are going to be. And we can take a darker brown and that's going to be our branch to where the parakeet's sitting on. I'm going to use a bigger brush actually. So we can go back to our smaller brush and we're going to start working in uh, with some darker greens, browns, uh, just to pick out the highlights, the definitions. Can you see there, just to show the definition of the feathers. And then we're going to take a really dark bit of paint and we're going to draw the actual ring for the ring-necked parakeet. Then back to the big brush, lots of nice green. And we're going to fill in those tail feathers. So now for the last part, I'm going to make myself a darker green and I'm just going to work into the areas where the light is not hitting the bird. So where the wings meet the body, just by the feet, just to get a nice bit of a sense of three-dimensionality. And back to the small brush, just to get the very fine details on the feet. And we're almost done. So we're just about finished now. You can see, it's a nice, friendly, colourful parakeet. <laughs> so I've got a variety of different marks in there, using a dry brush and a wet brush. Um, I'm feeling quite happy with it, I'm feeling quite calm and relaxed. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I'm just going to sign this and date it and, um, and we're done. Thank you very much.